Alex Sutherland here, and I've got a new strategy pack for you guys on C betting from imposition. And in this strategy pack, we're going to look at first the theory and conceptual concepts that go into C betting. Then we'll look at some GTO ranges on you know a variety of flop textures, as well as minimally exploitative uh, C betting, where we look at how we would attack weak C bet defense strategies, and also how we would attack as a defender weak C betting strategies so that we can start to recognize situations where our opponents are playing poorly and you know how much of an EV gain there is for attacking them in a variety of situations. Now, one of my big goals in this strategy pack is to give you guys the tools and conceptual understanding of C betting to be able to look at you know a variety of board textures and have a good intuitive sense of you know, ranking, say, one to five, if I give you five boards, rank them one to five, which boards will the GTO C betting frequency be highest to lowest, which, uh, you know, rank them in terms of EV as an imposition player, if both players play GTO, which board's the best for me, which board's the worst for me. Uh, these are all skills that I think you can become reasonably accurate at, you know, even without looking at a GTO solution for all five boards, if you have a good conceptual understanding of what GTO C betting usually looks like. Uh, I think you can develop the skills and the understanding to, without actually computing solutions on all those boards, to have a good sense of you know which ones you should see about the most, which ones you should see about the least, what the key components, the key kind of general concepts behind your seabedding range should be on each of those boards, and that is the skill that you really need to transition, you know, GTO solutions to playing better at the tables is building up a strong conceptual understanding of what GTO play looks like on you know, a few specific boards so that you can then apply that to a wide range of situations that you might encounter in the real world as you're playing. Now, as an overview for this pack, C betting is one of the most fundamental parts of poker, and that's why it's so important to study. It comes up so often, especially if you play a tight, aggressive preflop style. You know, most players uh, check to the preflop raiser almost all the time. So, the vast majority of the time that you're acting post-flop, you know, the most common action you're going to face is a C-bet decision. Should I C-bet, should I not? And remember, our, you know, BBs per 100, our win rate, our strategy EV, is summing up all the frequencies of our actions times the EV of our action. So these really high frequent actions, the most common action of C-betting, is going to have a huge impact on our win rate, even if we're kind of shifting the payoffs by small amounts. Now, in addition to being, you know, fundamental, it's also quite complicated. Uh, there was a reason I made my first strategy pack about CBET defense. Uh, CBET defense is actually a much simpler topic than choosing whether to CBET or not. And as we'll see, you know, there's a variety of reasons for that. But the, the basic action, the basic reason is just that folding is a really, really simple action. So when you're pondering your CBET defense, you're mostly thinking, you know, should I fold or not? And if one of those options, the folding, is really simple, it's a little easier to make those EV judgments. When you're considering whether to see bet or not, you're you know trying to judge, should I bet and open up the action, kind of open up this kettle of worms that's very hard to assess exactly what will happen after we bet, or should I check and see a free turn card and then have to play out the turn? Those are two complex outcomes that we need to be able to make value comparisons between, which is much harder than comparing you know, folding to one complex option. Now, something that's definitely come up for me in my coaching, uh, you know, I coach a fair number of mid-stakes players, not as much anymore, but I was doing a lot of that, you know, six months ago. Um, many of them, even pretty successful, strong players, had a weak conceptual understanding of C betting uh, at a theoretical level. And then I think also some of the results of that would C bet in a way that was pretty easily exploited and, you know, some of them I think we're doing a good job of ex at least exploiting player tendencies in the population. Others I think we're just kind of confused about what a good seabedding range would look like. Um, in this strategy pack, we're going to try and, you know, correct that mistake for any of you guys watching who might have it and teach you how to effectively attack your opponents who might have seabedding leaks. So we're going to start by looking at the theory of seabedding and saying, why do we seabed? And as usual, like I do in all my strategy packs, the first, you know, 20 minutes or so is going to be very tight theory focused. We're not going to be looking at too many real world cases. We're going to be 
just thinking about math, thinking about concepts, and really trying to make sure we have an understanding of you know why you would bet in poker, and you know mathematically, not just you know bluffer value kind of terms, but actual mathematical reasons of why you'd bet, and then condensing that into why specifically you would see bet. Then we will get into looking at GTO ranges on a few board textures, kind of getting into this, you know, should I see bet more on king 8 6 2 tone or 10 7 6 2 tone as a cutoff opener versus the big blind? Um, that should be a question that, you know, with some study should be easy for you to answer. You should just know because it's, it's usually not going to be close. I should see bet a lot more on one of those boards than the other. Um, and, you know, spoiler, you should see bet a lot more on the 1076 than the King 86 as a cutoff of razor versus a big blind collar using most realistic ranges, 100 BBs deep. And then we're going to get into how to exploit a few types of suboptimal C betting, uh, the most common of which is going to be C betting too much on kind of, uh, you know, less dynamic boards. And then how to see bet exploitively against suboptimal opponents. So we'll look at some incorrect defense strategies and how to attack them. And the goal in this video is to do all those things scientifically with EV measurements. I'm not going to be talking about, you know, just my feelings on the matter or my thoughts or pontificating. My goal is to actually present you guys with EV measurements of, you know, if this is the opponent's C bet range and it's not GTO. Here is the exact EV that a minimally exploitive opponent could attack uh, that leak for. And so we're going to be doing leak measurements using minimally exploitive analysis. We'll also be looking at GTO calculations to get, you know, hard equilibrium EVs. And we'll be trying to really be scientific about ma and mathematical about every step in the process so that the results are, you know, verifiable, mathematical, not just my opinion. So let's get into it.